There we go. Welcome back to Love of a Classic. And yes, you are seeing the Range Rover in the workshop and uh, not down in storage. Two reasons for that. You've probably already seen a video where we're replacing the floor down in the storage unit. And I don't really work on cars there. That's just going to be a storage for cars, nothing else. And I tried, I, I measured a bit, and I saw that if I lowered this on the lower suspension setting, and I did a couple of other things, lots of Mara tires, it just just makes it in here so um got it in here which is good because i can work both day and night i have heat and everything and it has a coolant leak like we saw in the previous video here is the new hose i'm going to replace it's the one under the supercharger and i think it's going to be a um, quite an intense job i just want to apologize in advance i am not going to show all of this in detail for a couple of reasons um i actually really don't have the time but i wanted to share at least a bit of it so it's going to be you know, parts of it might be some time lapse, things like that. Um, so, you guys, many of you know, you've seen my community post. My wife is ill and not doing very well, so um, I'm limited on time on working on things. Also, I have a construction crew right here right now working on the other building, and uh, you know, coming asking questions and doing things. But we want to get this car back on the road because uh, it's really the most comfortable car for my wife to get in and out of. We've been driving XJ40, XJ6, all the other ones. Uh, it's really very low and very difficult for her to get in and out with um, with her illness. So um, got to get this thing back on the road. Also, it's her car and uh, you know she has a lot of doctor's visits coming up and things. So we got to get this thing up and running and uh, I'm hoping to do it quickly. But I'm going to start by doing things that you've seen before. We're going to remove the coolant fan, the shroud. We're going to let off the tension of the belts, drain the coolant system. Um, and then we can start removing things here in the engine bay. So I'm gonna start by removing those things I just mentioned and then I'll show you what the next steps are. I've drained the coolant, I removed the fan and the top of the fan shroud, which I said we all did before when I replaced the belts and tensioners and a thermostat and all that. So I'm ready to get the belt off down there. Let me get a light on for you guys. So I just have a ratchet on there to get the supercharger belt off. You may be able to do that with the fan in place, but you just get a lot more room for activities when you do so. I'm just gonna slack it off like that and get the belt off. Need two hands for that thing, but we'll get that off. Then I'm gonna start looking at removing that piece of the uh, air intake for the climate control back there. And I'm gonna look at the snorkel over here. And a couple of things. We've got the throttle bodies back there. And um, yeah, lots of other things to remove. I think that this whole thermostat housing needs to be removed as well. But um, we'll see. Basically, what we're trying to get to is the supercharger that is down there. Remove that. And below that, we have the hose that we're looking for. All of this is a little bit exploratory surgery. I have checked in the manual. But... Uh, I haven't done it before, so we'll see. This, I just loosen it from the throttle body here, and I have a feeling, at least I hope so, that this mount thing just sort of slides off here. Um, maybe not. Let's see, there's some heat insulation. grab a flashlight and have a closer look at that. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, I think it's just actually all the stuff. There we go. And there is something holding on the cable here. So Get some pliers pushed out of the way, and we're getting a little bit closer. You can see the throttle body now, and the top of the supercharger. This should be the last fastener holding the top of the supercharger on. This is 
I'm not mistaken, basically the air intake on the supercharger. Or, uh, no, it's the out because you have the, the air comes here, goes over here into the throttle body through the supercharger and then up over here. So this is the out of the supercharger. Then it goes through these heat exchangers and then into the manifold. These seem to be both, uh, you know, don't come out fully. I just sort of sit back a bit. Alright, it's loose still. And a little, a little hose. Okay, some pliers for that. In case you're wondering, yes, I am standing on like a little stool thing to get up. And no, I'm not short. This car is just really big. Okay, that hose actually broke off, but uh, it just lost like a tiny bit so we can put that on again. Everything is on here and doesn't look too bad. And gaskets in really really good shape as well so uh, I mean there were no lean coats or anything for this car it was running very well except for a slight leak and here is what the inside of a supercharger looks like and we have a little bit of oil up there coming from the intake but um, honestly I'm not really that worried this is not an engine in its first flush of youth I mean it runs very very well but we're talking over 300,000 kilometers, it's never been taken apart. And uh, a little bit of oil, I'm not too worried about that. But um, don't see any scoring, don't see any dirt in here anywhere. So I think I'm going to dry this off, get some masking tape, cover this off so we don't get any dirt in there. And then the next step seems to be to get the throttle body out of the way. And it seems that you can leave the coolant hoses and vacuum lines on it and just sort of lay it on its side. So we're going to try that approach. Lots of fiddling later and I've made some progress. Wasn't really able to film it because you wouldn't see anything. Due to the height of the ceiling here, I can't put the uh, bonnet up all the way into the service position. So I've been sitting on here, leaning over, because this is the back of the supercharger. And that needs to be removed. I also just removed the um, throttle body. It's just sitting over there. You can just you know, bend it over to the side. So that bolts to here. When that is bolted on, you get access to four Torx screws here, which are pretty much impossible to get to. Then there are some vacuum lines and the sensor to disconnect. And this is the back of the supercharger. So that's where the air comes in. Got some dirt down there just a little bit now when I took everything apart, but we'll clean that up very carefully. Also get a little bit of the oil in there. And oil in there is just, it's from the PCV. Just going here into the intake, so that's probably where it's all sort of coming from, but you know, not the first flush of you. This engine is not in the first flush of you. As I said, it's, um, it's been around the block. If we have a look back here, that bolt there it holds on to the back of the supercharger. And uh, then there are two up front. And we should be able to get it off then. And I have heard that people have been able to remove it without removing this water pipe in the front here. It's just I don't want to disturb too many things. So I think that if I can sort of lean the supercharger down a little bit i should be able to get through but uh you know famous last words probably not going to work out that should be the last bolt holding the supercharger on 
course, I hope so. Now it's just the big question. Can you actually move them backwards? Okay, it feels very, very loose. But this is really good news. Oh, yes, you can move it backwards. Or at least I think so. Feels like it's a pretty heavy piece of kit. I mean, we're more than halfway. we go and here we have the supercharger I'm gonna put this somewhere safe but uh, saw now a couple forms still saying that you can't remove it without removing the front water um, no pipes for the thermostat you can definitely do it so with this out of the way we can have a look at the valley see what that looks like and see how complicated it looks to replace the hose but it's a pretty heavy piece of kit even though it looks to be all aluminum. With the supercharger removed, I can see the hoses that go, you can see down there under the supercharger, and there is the leak right there. So, I mean, probably I could just, you know, shorten the hose a bit and done it, but I want to do it properly, replace this, and then I'm going to replace a couple more hoses a bit later on. It's a very easy car to drain the coolant on. Replace it like this one. Um, is uh, basically like a top radiator hose. They always take a lot of heat and it's um, still pliable, but it's a little hard. So I'm gonna order one of those and I can replace that with everything else in place. So that's a quick one and a couple other ones. So, you know, we're gonna replace all of them at some point, but I told you what they all cost together and it is um, crazy. But this is sort of the difficult one. I have the new one laid out here it comes with clamps and everything and that little aluminum bracket up there so i am going to carefully loosen those fittings over there and that bracket lay everything down put down that new hose dry everything up clean up this whole area and then we'll be ready to put the supercharger back on so this was quite quite fiddly but that new hose is in place so there's two of them down here one goes into there and the other one goes up here and that's where we had the leak then they snake around this engine loom back here and they're part of this bracket that screws into place and then the heater hoses here just click on then you have these two hoses here which are going to go to the throttle body but i'm going to put them on a little bit later but everything is really buttoned up back here and I'm getting ready to put the supercharger back on. It's just sitting right there on the floor. And you may be wondering, well, I mean, yes, this is the time to do some other things at the same time, like replace the oil and the supercharger and all that. I have, um, haven't got the oil at the moment it's on its way, but you can service it in place. It's really easy to get to you just vacuum it out and put it in there. So I will do that in place. So really what I'm just going to do now is put everything back on. I'm going to clean off anything I can. Like I said, there's a little bit of oil in the intake elbow. We'll clean that up. But I'm going to put it all back together. Go get some coolant. And uh, when you see this again, it should have it all back together. We should be ready to fill up with coolant, fire this thing up, and check for leaks. But I think before we fire it up, we'll pressurize the coolant system with a pressure tester and make sure that we have no leaks. It's a little while later and a lot of things are back in place. So, um, supercharger's all bolting down, throttle body, all of that in the back. We got this here bolted down. We got the hoses going to the throttle body. They're also back on. 
So technically, I think the best thing to do right now is to test the coolant system. So we're going to fill it up with coolant and then pressurize the system and just check for leaks because at this point, we don't have that big sort of snorkel over here on so we can see things a lot easier. Hopefully there are no leaks, but if there are, hopefully we can um, pretty easily get to them now or at least get to them a little quicker than later on. Time for the moment of truth to add some coolant. Um, it seems like it takes about 12 liters of coolant. But, uh, we'll see how much, how empty the system is. So we'll start by adding, this is three liters of concentrated coolant. And then we'll add about the same in distilled water. I'm trying to keep the mix as close to 50-50 as possible. Hopefully this is going to work to get everything like bled through a little bit at least or check the leaks without having to start the engine. I am going to open the bleed screw here. I need a bigger screwdriver. Should help everything out a little bit, I think. Yeah, it is slowly sinking down. So put the lead screw to the side and continue filling the system. I don't have a complete coolant system filled, of course, but I poured in as much as I could now. And I pressurized it there to half a bar or um, 7 PSI, looks like. It's been holding so far. And I'm just going to shine my light around basically where I've been messing around to see if it's leaking anywhere. So right there was the major leak. Let's see if I can get my hand in there. And that is nice and dry. The other hose connection is on their supercharger out there. Can't see that. We do have two connections back here on the throttle body. They are, let me see, they're both dry. There's probably not any coolant up there yet, but uh, these connections are also dry and the pressure is holding. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait maybe 10 minutes or so, make sure that the pressure is holding. And uh, if it is, I'll continue mounting everything, putting the belts back on, the fan and everything. And then we should be ready to start it up and bleed the coolant system. It's been about 15 minutes and it's dropped about half a PSI. I can't see any leaks anywhere. And I'm pretty okay with that just because Coolant system isn't full. It's probably air pockets and things that's moving around. I mean, I have about half of the coolant in. It's just I can't get more until it circulates a little bit more. I mean, it actually did go down a bit, so that's good. I can add. It's at the minimum of the cold range right now. But I'm happy enough with that to continue putting everything back together. I put the belt on just now while I was waiting. I'll put the fan on, fan shroud, the rest of the intake button everything up here in the back and um, next time you see it you should be able to fire it up bleed the cool system and hopefully everything works as it should so everything should be back together now intake on here i got the fan on tighten fan shroud everything should be hooked up hooked up the battery so let's see if this thing fires up and then i'm gonna quickly start adding cooling because we should initially just start pumping everything around we'll put the heat on so that everything circulates and i'm going to leave the doors open when the doors on the car open that deactivates the um, air suspension so it doesn't try to pump up and hit the ceiling so uh, fingers crossed everything goes well and i haven't forgotten anything and that there are no leaks is 
Are they? Yeah. We gotta add coolant. Or spilled water because I added coolant glass. And then coolant panel is working. Can't see any correct strength from underneath at the moment. It is running well. Things seem to be running as it should at the moment. Coolant level is dropping a little bit there, so I'll keep opening the bleed here a little bit. So coolant coming back here, getting trying to get some of the air out. Like I said, I do have the heat on. It's on um, you know, max heat on both sides. But, um, I do see good coolant circulation, or at least air coming back there. So that is really good. Let's go and check in the car if we reached any temperature yet. It's starting to move up at least, so that is really good. No warning lights except closed door to change ride height, but I understand that. It's on purpose car, don't worry. But we're running nicely. I'm gonna let it warm up here fully, also because I, of course, wanna bleed the system. But I thought while I have all the underpants and everything off, it's a good time to change the oil. So I'm warming up a little bit to do that as well. I'm getting really nice and hot, toasty air here. We're almost up to temperature, just a little bit more. I've added coolant two more times. But, uh, yeah, pretty high there, but I'm expecting it to go down a little bit after the rest of the air goes out of it. I mean, the thermostat is probably not open yet. And, uh, yeah, worst case, if you ever add too much, you can just suck it out. But um, everything else seems to be going well. I've revved it a couple times just a little bit, checked that uh, it seems like I've hooked everything back up. The uh, throttle pedal and all that seems to work. And... Uh, you almost forget how smooth these engines are. It's a very, very smooth V8. Oil is draining. Uh, and the pulley see there to the left is just from when I removed the pipes under the supercharger. There was still some cool in them and it just ran out the back of the engine down there. So we'll clean that up when we get out of here. But while that is draining, I am going to wait a little bit longer, carefully open up here, and we'll put the pressure tester on now that the system is pretty much bled, and figure out if it holds pressure or not. It's been over 20 minutes, and we've dropped less than one PSI, but I don't think actually there is a leak, because if I pump it up any higher than 10, I hear air leaking out here. I don't think my fitting fits perfectly on this expansion tank. So if I pump it up, you know, to 15 or something, I'll hear air hissing out here. So um, I don't see any wetness anywhere. It doesn't smell of coolant anywhere. So I actually don't think we have a leak, except that uh, my fitting isn't perfect. The oil is drained now. I'm just gonna remove the filter, put that on, fill up with oil. We'll start it up, maybe add a tad bit of coolant, but I think that we're gonna come up to a pretty good level when I remove the pressure from the system. And then I think we're ready to go. I'm back from a successful test drive. Everything seems to be working well. And now my wife is going away. More tests, more hospital visits, but uh, hopefully the car will behave for you. But uh, I know you'll miss the sob terribly. Have fun. And that seems to be a successful fix. Like I said, I drove it a bit, everything seems fine. I have mixed some 50-50 coolant and show there where to fill up in case there's more air in the system that burps out, but 
in total it's been running for about 40 minutes both idling and high idle and driving so everything should be fine i need to wash up go inside and then um, clean up the workshop and it's time for the next car we'll see what that is i have a feeling it'll probably be uh probably one of the xjs's that will go in the workshop and do some things on next anyways if you like this video please give a thumbs up share it with friends if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot until next time i'm adam this was luma for classic i'll see you soon